In this video, we're simply going to walk through your Ecamm preferences and get everything dialed in. I'm going to show you how we've got it set up and then you can make the decision to set your own up based on that if you like. And we've also put this together as a little uh, check sheet, a little the document that goes along with this that you can download and keep that at the side of you if you want. Right, so it's at the bottom of this list here. These are all our different tabs that open up and the bottom one, show and hide preferences. So let's come right back to the start. You've got tabs along the top and then each one you've got a, a page of information. So as quickly as possible, let me run down these. Play in app sounds, turn this one off. I've been on people's lives and I can hear it going ting, ting, ting every time somebody comments. So just turn that off. I don't really see that you need that on at all. Um, if you want to see the animated reactions, if you're on a live and people are hearting it or laughing and things, you can see all those popping up. It's a really cool effect. Keep that one turned on. Do you want to see this uh, camera switcher in the main window? That's this down here. So I can actually turn that off if I don't want to see that camera switcher. Show the program window while in other apps. So if maybe I'm working in a PowerPoint or something and I it, it sits over the front of Ecamm, this will leave the little program window open. The same thing happens here. Keep utility window in the front when you're live. So a small little window if you want to keep that up. You can see I got these turned off and then that brings it back if you're using it. Automatic overlay alignment. Do you like the sticky? We'll see this more in a video when we're putting our overlays in. It just gives us markers around there and allows us to snap to them as we do it. This one is referring to preview mode. Just leave it on ask. And then the comments, if you're on a live and you click on a comment to bring it on screen, do you want it to automatically disappear after whatever delay you choose? If not, then the comment will stay on until you manually take it off. So again, I leave that one turned on. Your account, this will just be your details that you can manage if you want. Your streaming, we select on here 1080p. If you wanted to go higher than that, you can do it in here. If you're doing record only and you want 4K, you would change it over in here. The stream shape, again, we're gonna get onto all of these things in future videos, but this is, you can see it up here actually, if I change this, we go from wide, there's an extra wide more of a cinematic two by one. Classic is this four by three size. So you can see actually on my screen here, it's put these black bars down the side to show that, but note that the actual recorded video or the live that's going out won't have those black borders. It's just going to be the window that you can see. Square, again, these are just different formats that if you want this to appear in a Facebook feed, for instance, a square can be better than the wide one takes up a little bit more space or even more so we can go to tool over here so you're not going to see these black borders it's just how we is uh, showing us this your recorded video will be exactly that little bit there so for instagram and things this would be perfect and this is how you can change this shape around in here but for the majority of what you're doing leave it set on the default 16 by 9. your frame rate this is to do with your camera and as it says down here 25 or 30 frames per second is normally the best one you're going to take more bandwidth if you're going up for a higher 50 or 60 frames per second so if like me you're in the uk or europe you're going to be on this 25 frames per second if you're in the us then you're going to be on 30 frames per second. And uh, this chart that we're just putting on screen now will just help you decide where you are as to which of these regions you should be in. I leave high quality video turned on and the audio turned up as well. This is a really cool little feature that they've added in recently to Ecamm is that uh, it's saying to me now that for one destination, if I'm live streaming and I've selected in here on my live, I'm gonna to want to go to Facebook page, I wanna to go to a group, I wanna go out to YouTube, I wanna to go to LinkedIn, then it will keep adding up these destinations in here and I can do it in advance. But it's saying to me here that the required speed for this 1080p video to one destination is going to be five meg. And look, it's done a speed test here for me and I can do that. I don't need to go off to a, a third party speed test app. Click the button and it's doing a speed test for me. And remember, this is not the download speed. This is the upload speed. This is for your stream going out. There we go. It's come back and said, I'm getting 600 meg upload speed. So not a problem at all for me. Notice how that changes. If I ask it to do 4K, then let's see what happens to that five. It's now gone up to 12.8. And if I wanted to go out to five destinations, it's telling me it's gonna be 63 megs. So depending on your internet connection, you might have a, a little red box here that says, sorry, you're not gonna be able to do that um, size stream out to this many destinations. 
Uh, really, really clever and useful little addition down there. So that's the stream then recording. This is again, a, it's a pro feature. So if you're not seeing this, it's because you're not on the pro account, but it allows me on here to record separately. So if I've got multiple cameras attached on here, and I love this because for us editing, maybe we wanna have two different cameras working and have multiple files that we can pull into our editing software afterwards. This allows me to do that. Or if I've got an, a guest on, I can have a clean feed. So I don't need to be worrying on the live about was I showing them full screen or me and how do I mix it? I can do this afterwards in editing. So it's going to give me back at the end of my stream or record only with my guests, these separate files. It's going to give me a mixed one and it'll give me the original files clean from each of them. I can select the audio as well. So I need to make sure that that's set to the guests if that's what they're on. And then if we've done camera effects, if I've zoomed in on anything like that, then it's asking me, do I want to apply that? I mentioned in a previous video about interview guests and maybe you wanna be able to zoom them in so you're both looking very similar, then yes, you would wanna tick this. And then do you want to record isolated audio tracks as well? Again, this was a, a big deal for those that are creating podcasts to be able to bring a guest on. You don't necessarily need to live. You can just record only. You and your guest, you're getting separate tracks that you can mix afterwards. Maybe your guest's mic was quieter than yours. Well, you can lift it up. And then when you mix them back in together, they'll be the same volume. So some really, really cool features in here. And then your uh, recording file format, we leave it as .mov usually. And then if we wanna have a countdown, so when I click on record only, do I want it to give me a three second countdown or just as soon as I hit record, it start. So um, there we go. Now, if you get to this area and you see that all this is grayed out, it's because, and it should say, as you can see on this screenshot here, recording isolated video tracks requires an Apple Silicon Mac. So you need one of the newer Macs, the M1 chip, the M2 chip. If you're not on that, then this option isn't available to you. So it's just going to be grayed out, but you can still do the recording, the isolated tracks. Destinations, we'll cover this in another video. This is where you start to add in Facebook pages, groups, YouTube channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, all these other places now we can put in here as destinations. And then when we want to go live, we'll simply just tick off of the ones that we've brought in, which destinations we want to go to. So this again is where we start with that and bring these in. Then under video, the default source mode. So when I open up a new scene to start, do I want it to start on camera, blank or screen share? Default transition. So when you're jumping from one scene to the next, there's a whole lot of transitions that you can do in here. Again, some of these are pro ones. So if you don't see them all, it's because you're not on the pro license. Fade out when we finish our live. Do we want it just to fade to black at the end or to just abruptly stop? When we go onto a scene with a video, do we want it to auto play? Again, excellent feature. If I just suddenly change to a scene and I want that video to play, do I want to be a picture in picture above the overlays? I tend to turn this one off. Actually, I don't use the default picture in picture. Again, we can cover that in another video. So do I want by default to show this picture in picture in new video and screen share scenes? I'm going to turn that one off as well. Do I want to disable the built in camera? If you're running on a MacBook Pro and the laptop camera keeps coming in as the default one and you don't want it to because you're using an external camera, then you can disable that and it won't see it as an option. Then audio over here, it's letting you select your speakers. It's letting you turn echo cancellation on. If there's any risk, the echo cancellation will stop your microphone hearing what's coming through your speakers. So maybe you're doing an interview or you're playing a video file. You don't want that to be coming through because that's when you start to get an echo. So by ticking that on, you're stopping the microphone hearing what's coming out of the speakers. And then there's a feature in here as well for external speakers to do the same job for those. Broadcast system audio. So maybe you are playing a clip, maybe you're showing a YouTube video or something on your desktop, you want to be able to hear that audio coming back through. So um, it's asking you on here different options of when you might want to have that system audio on. Automatically mute the microphone and your guest during video playback. This is a great feature. You know, if I want to play a video, it gives me a chance to just pause. Maybe I'm doing a quick show reel while I'm scanning over the comments and I don't want people to hear me tapping or coughing. But note that that happens because there are times when the amount of people that think they're playing a video and talking over it and they don't realize that it's muted them on that scene. So uh, that's in there. 
mic delay if you find that there's a problem with the lip sync and your there's a delay in your microphone to your camera this is where you can adjust that then you can split out the input audio to two different channels left and right you can mute your movie sound on your speakers if you want and uh, a system output mix as well interviewing do you want to play a chime when a guest connects to you i like this you can auto answer guests so it will bring them straight in you can send them to a green room so that they can sit and wait there until they're ready to come on. Then this lowering the music. This lowering the music and movie sound while you're off air simply means if you wanted to, maybe you're planning on doing an interview with a guest or co-hosting while you've got a little intro that's playing a video, you can both be muted and the volume's just taken down so that you can speak across it without that coming out into the broadcast. Then as soon as the broadcast starts and your microphones are up, the volumes come back up. Your guest view, we'll see this when we get into the interviewing. On their end, if they log in on Chrome or another browser, what do you want the default to be? Do you want them to see themselves or the actual broadcast that's coming through? So leave that as set to broadcast. There's more customizing that you can do down here that we'll cover in another video. Now, screen sharing, including your desktop icons along the top here. I keep my desktop very tidy, but I know some of you have a, a whole load of icons and things, files all stuck all over your desktop. Rather than the embarrassment of sharing that or private things you don't want to see, by ticking this or unticking this, it will take off all these icons. The same thing happens here with the picture on the background. Maybe you've got a family photo on your desktop background. You don't want to share that in your live when you're sharing your screen. You can turn that off. But what it will do is just leave it black on there instead. So uh, I leave that on and I want it to just share this nice blue that I've got behind me. An option to adding a margin when you're zooming in on the app's windows. Do you want to see the mouse cursor? How big do you want the cursor? Do you want to show it when it clicks? And then showing everything, which will be your, you know, the full window when you're doing your screen share. So lots of options there for that. I encourage you to have a play with it, turn them on and off while you're doing it. Shortcuts, if you're into the Apple shortcuts, there are things that you can do here to, uh, you know, when Ecamm opens, do all these different things. The same with broadcast starting and finish it and when you quit it. So if you're into those automations, you can play with them in there, be my guest. <laughs> and then remote control, if you've got a loop deck or a stream deck, one of these kind of things plugged in, then that'll just show and tick down here. I'm not quite sure why this is in. Uh, somebody must have requested it, but um, that's what that tab there is. And that's your preferences. Any other things that you can't find, I'm sure you will spot them along the menu along the top here. But yeah, I encourage you to set those up. It's the kind of done once and then forget about it, or it should be. All right. So there it is. That's your preferences set up. Uh, there is uh, in the description here a document, as I say, that you can download if you want to be able to walk through this and just a, a reminder of what all of these different preferences are. Yeah, go for it. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll help you out. Preferences, tick. See you in the next video.